Show yourself, creature. Melkaia plays an important role in the Legacy of Cain series. The supposedly youngest and lowest ranks of Cain's vampire sons, he serves as one of the chief lieutenants of Cain's empire in the Soul Reaver era. And in this vein, he acts as the first boss of Legacy of Cain's Soul Reaver. He returns in Soul Reaver 2, which examines his origins as a human Seraphan warrior, and again positions him as a boss enemy. Melkaia was born as a human at some point in Nosgoth's early history. A sudden rise in vampire numbers triggered retribution from the humans and the formation of the Seraphan Vampire Hunting Order, and Melkaia joined up to stop the vampire menace. In time, he became established as one of the commanders of the order, counting Zephon, Rahab, Duma, Terrell, Raziel, and Malik as his brothers in arms leading the Crusaders to many victories. Though he was one of the oldest of the group, and arguably the lowest ranked of the leaders. At the height of the Crusades, Melchior accompanied the commanders on a daring mission into vampire territory. Tasked with assassinating legendary ancient vampire Yanis Audrin, who was believed to be the father of the vampire race, Melchior and his brethren infiltrated Yanis Audrin's mountain retreat following in the wake of a blue wraith, actually a future version of Raziel, and brought with them the vampire disabling staff of Mobius. As the wraith met with Janos, the commanders burst in. Janos transported the wraith away, and the Seraphan lieutenants battled with the vampire. And after a long battle, they emerged victorious and ripped out his dark heart believing it held the source of the curse. Taking the heart and the legendary Soul Reaver blade, the brothers in arms retreated to their stronghold as the blue demon returned to seek revenge. But their reprieve was only temporary. The demon followed them back to the stronghold and infiltrated the inner sanctum, opening the way for another vampire, Vorador, to attack the Circle of Nine. As they attempted to channel the demon through the fortress into the path of their strongest warriors, Malkia and Zephon together were the first to face the wraith. But even with their combined might, they were dispatched by the creature, and Malkia died on the floor of the Seraphan stronghold courtyard. But that wasn't the end of his story. In the years after his death, Malkaia was memorialized with a mural in the chapter house of the Seraphan stronghold, and his body was interred along with his fallen brothers in the tomb of the Seraphan. His body lay undisturbed for a millennium until the vampire Cain broke into the tomb, breathing his life force into the bodies of the fallen Seraphan warriors. Cain was able to snare their souls from the underworld and resurrect them as a new generation of undead necromantic vampires. Melchior was the last of the brothers to be raised, and he went on to raise his own lieutenants and subordinates, giving rise to the vampire clan known as the Melkahim, along with the Razilim, Turilim, Dumhim, Rahabim and Zephonim. The Melkahim were one of the vampire clans that waged war on Nosgoth in the name of Cain's empire. The rising of the undead proved to be an unstoppable force, with the vampires able to raise fallen warriors as their own. Within a few decades, the unstoppable undead horde had become completely dominant, all but wiping out human opposition and leaving a single human city as a placid token of the fallen human resistance. The vampires built a new renaissance and raised an empire built by human slaves. But all was not necessarily well in the world of Melchior and the Melkahim. As the last raised, Melchior inherited the weakest portion of Cain's vampire gift, and he was prone to continued decay, with patches of his skin needing to be periodically replaced. This meant that along with drinking the blood of their victims, Melchior and his clan gained a reputation for skinning their victims 
use their skins as well. To counter their weaknesses, the Melkahim bred more warriors than the other clans and began experimenting with death and decay, and even learnt to graft entire body parts. As the Empire developed, its leading vampires became bored and detached with its day-to-day -day affairs, with Cain and the Council often betting on the outcomes of political intrigues of the lesser vampires of the Empire. For nearly a millennium, vampires were uncontested rulers of Nosgoth, and they continued to evolve, entering states of change and emerging with new gifts with Melkaya presumably going through several pupation cycles over the course of hundreds of years. Until one day, his eldest brother Raziel evolved before their master Cain, growing a pair of bat-like wings. Melkaya and his brothers were called to a meeting at the Pillars where Raziel unveiled his new gift, and Melkaya was visibly uneasy at the revelation, and the brothers were even more shocked at Cain's response of ripping out Raziel's wings and ordering him to be executed in the Lake of the Dead. If the law of multiplayer Nosgoth is followed, then Malkaia was secretly joyful at the downfall of his favoured brother. But in the aftermath, Cain vanished, resulting in the Melkahim doubling down on their spectral experimentations as the clans devolved into a full-blown civil war. Their endeavours provided some useful additional discoveries, such as the secret of liquid fire Naptha, and they gained access to the forbidden drylands of death, along with the abilities to summon various undead creatures, which would come in handy when the clans reunited against the resurgent human threat. By the time Raziel returned a few centuries later, Melkaia and the Melkahim had control of a territory centred around the necropolis and the ruins of Nepraptor's retreat. But their devolution had accelerated, with the clan reduced to a zombie-like state, and Melkaia being little more than an amorphous form covered in stitched together human skins, with Melkaia clearly feeling some revulsion for his appearance. Raziel's journey to the necropolis was one of his first acts upon his return, and he reached Melkaia's chambers in an old charnel house beneath the necropolis. The two discussed Cain's plans and the dispatching of the Raziel-im before they battled. Raziel was able to trick Melkaia into a gigantic meat grinder before finally providing him release and consuming his soul to gain the ability to phase through barriers. Raziel would use this ability to progress onto the Sanctuary of the Clans and his first meeting with Cain at the Pillars. Melkaia's death would merely be the first of his brothers, as Raziel took personal revenge against the Empire. But he would learn of their shared Seraphan heritage or travelling back in time and it wouldn't be the last that Raziel would see of Melkaia. Like the rest of his brothers, Melkaia was seen at several different stages through his life, and not always in the correct order. He was first seen as a vampire along with the rest of the Council of Cain's Empire in the introduction cutscene of Legacy of Cain's Soul Reaver. For that cutscene, his appearance was designed by the cinematic company Glyph X, an artist boy Lake. This initial appearance is the only time Melkaia's regular vampire form is seen, and the model he uses was adapted from Raziel's to give a uniform appearance to the lieutenants, although each was given unique design flourishes, with Melkaia given a bald head and bulging stitches, suggestive of his underlying issues. This appearance formed the basis of a mural of the vampire Melkaia that was seen on the wall of the necropolis as Raziel made his way through the territory. The mural itself was actually formed from the real-world Externerstein relief found in Germany 
which depicts the recovery of Jesus' body from the cross after his crucifixion. In-game, the Glyph X Melchior model is carved over the top, largely obscuring the background mural. Melchior would be seen later in the game, as he served as the first boss Raziel fought upon his return from the Abyss several years later. This depicted his monstrous devolved appearance, with the explicit explanation of the underlying decay and the skinning nature of Melchior and his clan. In this form, several bodies and faces can be seen stitched together to cover Melchior's bulbous mass. Melchior is described in background materials as vain, and searching for the most stunning specimens. And as a subtle in-joke, the faces used for his skin are Crystal Dynamics employees. Some time after Raziel defeated Melchior, he would discover their shared Seraphan heritage as he uncovered the tomb of the Seraphan, where the group had been buried and where Cain had resurrected the warriors as his favorite sons. Melchior's sarcophagus is specifically marked in the tomb and bears some artistic designs which are difficult to make out in the retail builds, but can be seen to depict a pair of winged angels in earlier prototypes. Melchior and his clan notably went through several design changes, with more detailed scarring and stitches seen in earlier prototype builds, and it becomes more obvious that Melchior is wearing a mask. These details were toned down in retail releases, presumably for memory purposes. The clan standard was a distinctive symbol that was representative of the attributes of the clan patriarch. Although the exact meaning of Melchior's symbol has not been disclosed, it may well have been inspired to some degree by symbology seen in Far Eastern cultures. It's traditionally seen on clan banners as a white symbol on a mustard yellow background. But other variants exist, with black symbols featured. Alongside the clan banner, Melchior is also represented in a more symbolic fashion on the Soul Reaver title screen, with each of the faces representing a boss character, although not being straight depictions of them. The figure in the bottom right covering its face represents Melchior and his revulsion with his own form. In the early concepts of Soul Reaver, the clan and boss didn't have a formal name, but were codenamed Skinners, with Malkaia being the Skinner boss, emphasizing the need to take the skins of those they fed from. Later on as the game progressed, they were given more fitting angelic-based names, with Malkaia initially named as either Hemmer, an angel of wrath whose name means rage, or Rumen, an angel who scrutinized the evil deeds of people before they went to hell. Ultimately, the team settled on Malkia, a name which means God is King. Several biblical persons bear the name or variants of it, but of particular interest is the angel Malkia, an angel who serves the blood and is often mentioned in relation to wounds and protection against hemorrhaging. The cancelled multiplayer spin-off Nosgoth, which was set in the Soul Reaver era, didn't feature Melchior directly, but it did mention him several times in background materials, which developed the character in his clan slightly in the period of Raziel's execution, much of which was based upon extensions of the lore created for Soul Reaver. In these snippets, Melchior was portrayed as vain and jealous of his brothers, and as particularly envious of Raziel's beauty, with him being overjoyed at Raziel's downfall. The lore excerpts also elaborated on the interclan struggles and tactics, with the Melkahim produced in greater numbers. It also added lore suggesting that on Melchior's orders, the clan began experimenting with alchemy and necromancy to gain an edge on the other clans, leading them to the establishment of the Melkahim summoner class seen in the game. When Raziel went back in time to earlier periods of Nosgoth's history, it would be the earlier human Seraphan versions of his brothers that would take precedence. 
and Raziel would find murals depicting his Seraphan heritage after he arrived in the Seraphan stronghold. Melkaia would be depicted with a sword and with an appearance that notably bore a resemblance to his vampire depiction, bearing a bald head and mustard yellow armour pieces and trim markings evocative of his clan banners, and with a helmet with tall spikes, not unlike those seen around the head of the devolved Melkaia. Later on in the game, the Seraphan Melkaia would make an appearance, notably featured as one of the commanders storming Yanos Aldrin's retreat, and later featured as a pseudo-boss in the last boss run of Soul Reaver 2, where he would be fought along with Zephon in the courtyard of the Seraphan stronghold, with Raziel himself revealed to be behind the original human deaths of the Seraphan brothers. In this scene, Melkaia bears a pike rather than the sword shown earlier, but there are further notable parallels to his vampire character, with the helmets giving him and his brother inhuman eyes when worn, referencing their inhuman devolutions. Melkaia's later clan banner can also be seen on his waist sash, suggesting it had some kind of symbolic reference, even in his human life and that may be the in-universe basis for his later clan symbol. The souls of Melkaia and Zephon, like those of the rest of his brothers, absolutely cannot be consumed, at the express intention of developers to avoid a paradoxical situation. In the sequence they are featured, Raziel is given the Reaver, which binds to him in such a way that it prevents him from taking damage, consuming souls, or shifting to the Spectral Realm. The Lieutenant's souls are of a unique design compared to the rest of the souls in the game, and they quickly fly up and away, as if destined for something more. Melkaia can also be seen in the series comics, where his devolved form is seen as a premonition in the Soul Reaver comic. His vampire form can be seen in the German Vorgeschichte comic, and both his vampire and devolved vampire appearances can be seen in the Recollections of the Defiance comic. Melkaia also makes a number of other appearances in behind-the-scenes artwork by team members. His regular vampire form can be seen in artwork by Glyphex artist Boyd Lake, and his devolved form can be seen in concept art by both Arnold Ayala and Brett Hartthorne. His Saraphan form and concepts of it can be seen in the bonus materials of Soul Reaver 2. We hope you've enjoyed these lore bites. Join us next time for more Legacy of Cain lore.